Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School and I'm out here in a clearing area on top of one of the hills here at the Pathfinder School. It's an area where we sometimes camp students. It's an area where I've got my wall tent set up right now and we've got a couple hot tents set up that we used at the winter survival class this past weekend to do some hot tent and stove demos. And I wanted to use this clearing area to set up a few things for you today and show you a couple tips and tricks. But what I really wanted to do is I wanted to introduce these new poncho poles to you, the Pathfinder poncho poles that we talked about in this week's video and we used in the winter skills class to make that parabolic reflector shelter. And Ed Mitchell is the one who invented these poles and gave us permission exclusively to reproduce them so that we could sell them as a product that was either standalone or in a kit. And it's a set of poles, and this was in a green bag. The ones that we'll have for sale next weekend will be in a black bag. It's a set of basically special made tent poles that are sized for a Helicon poncho or an off the shelf type poncho you would buy from Amazon. And they have some specialty hardware built into them that allows them to lock into the grommet holes and also a specialty piece of hardware here that allows them to twist on each other so that you form an X pattern or a parabolic shape underneath a poncho to use for a variety of purposes in shelter making, as well as, like I said, the parabolic reflector shelter. So I've got just a normal Helicon poncho here we're gonna use for some of these demos today. This is the poncho that I carry all the time and it's the poncho that works great with these poles. The one modification I make to my ponchos is in every corner grommet, I just put a little fisherman's loop in there and that basically just gives me a place for staking. If I don't have stakes that will fit through the grommet holes, it gives me a place that I can use toggles if I'm using a rapid deployment ridge line and those type things without disturbing this inner ring that is my grommet. Now, if I'm using real skinny tent stakes, I can shove them through the grommet and this grommet will leave room in here with this paracord for the tent poles to go through it. So let's lay this poncho out on the ground. Look at how these tent poles assemble and go in and we'll go from there. So much like any dome tent design, the poles are snapped together with shock cord. They will assemble themselves pretty much as you push them out. And you can see right there's our pivot point and our poles go right through that pivot point. And once you assemble them together, you'll basically have an X of poles here that rotates in the center, just like this. And that X sits down on top of the poncho like this, and it's a little off center for a reason we'll talk about in a minute. Now it's as simple as coming in here and plugging these into the grommets. So you have a stop built into that, a piece of hardware right there to stop on that grommet. And you'll do that on all four sides. Now you can see that these poles are quite a bit longer than this poncho. They're not just going to fit on any piece of fabric. It has to have stretch to it so that you can stretch that poncho out and that's what causes that parabolic shape. And there we go. Now, when we flip this over, we pretty much have a small dome tent. Now, if you look at this, the peak is a little bit off center on this. It's offset a little bit. That's to give you headroom versus leg room because you can then use this as a shelter that you can basically lay down inside of if you want to, pinning the back corners down and just drop it down. rain protected shelter so if i stake down three corners of this and leave this third corner stake where i can just stretch it over the loop now i have something that i can get inside of that's low profile and i actually have a waterproof shelter so i can crawl in here just like this get on the pad come over here hook this over the top and I'm good. Very low profile. All right, so we know that by putting those poles in there, we have a low profile shelter that we can use. The other beauty of this is that now we have something, we can raise this up and we can make a tarp shelter out of this, like a half face lean, 
And because we have those poles in there, we don't have to worry about pulling the hood out to bell the back of that poncho out to give us more room underneath it, keep it from flapping around. The poles are going to do that for us as they are. So this makes a fantastic lean-to type shelter. And that's where we came up with the idea of the parabolic reflector shelter by putting a space blanket in there in front of the fire to trap that radiant heat and direct it back into the shelter and onto the user. So I'm gonna set this up with for you guys today. And what I'm gonna do is, because there's no trees up here to use, I'm gonna use a system of bipods to set this up as a lean-to, but I'm gonna use a single rapid deployment ridge line to do all of that from the bipods to the setup so that you can see how that's done. All right, so we've got our rapid deployment ridge line. We've got four poles about four to five feet long, fairly straight. We have our four tent stakes for the six from our shelter kit. And we have our rooster mod hatchet. And this is the same profile design that is on the Camp Carver from Council Tool. He is the designer of that ax. This one is just made from an old plum roofing hatchet and has the hammer pole. All right, so we're gonna take our rapid deployment ridge line. We're gonna pull the front end of it out and we're gonna move these prussics up the line a little bit as we go. And we're gonna stake this loop to the ground. So this is the loop that we would use to attach to a tree, our bowling loop. We're gonna attach it to the ground. Always put your stakes in at a 45 degree angle away from the shelter. It makes them much harder to pull out in the wind. Now we're just going to pull out some line here to give ourselves a little bit of access to make our bipod. Now you can see the way this is set up, this is still all on the coil. I'm just pulling out what I need and sliding the prussics out of my way. And now I'm gonna take two of these poles and set them up on the ground just like this in a cross. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna come around the back side and underneath. And I'm going to do it one more time, just like this. And then I'm going to go up and over, pull that taut, just like this, and go in between in a figure eight, just like this. Now I can pull against this, and it won't go anywhere. Now what we want to do is we want to take our shelter, just kind of sneak it up here, so it's the same as our tripod. About like this and give ourselves just a little bit of standoff a couple inches enough to go to the other end so now we've come to the other end we've taken those prussic loops and we've left them in the middle we're going to get this to about the same height and so now we're going to go around those bipod legs twice there's one wrap there's two wraps and then all we're going to do once we've done our two wraps, again, it's just a figure eight here and here. And then we just line everything up the way we want it. We pull this out and we stake this down. Now on this side, all we're gonna do is come down here about where we wanna be, put a Marlin spy catch in the line, pull our stake tight against that. Again, 45 degree angle and tap it in. Any excess that we've got, we can just roll it up here. Take that loop, kind of make a girth hitch just like that, slide it down the line, neat and tidy. So now, as you can see, we've got our ridge line set up. All we have to do is get this bad boy on there. We can use our prussic loops to attach with tent stakes, just like any other tarp, stake down in the back. And we've got a lean-to shelter that's actually already belled out in the back and gives us extra room on the inside. So one side of this tarp, I just dropped a loop over this fork. That secures one side. I don't have to worry about using this prussic loop. On the other side, all I did was a loop-to-loop -loop connection. So I just shoved the loop through the loop just like that. Stuck a stake through it, pulled the line tight just like that and pulled it. Now remember, we have a center grommet here that we can work with on a tarp. So all I did was took that third prussic and I just punched it through and pulled the line tight. I came back around and went underneath the line with a girth hitch. So I pulled that loop up and around, opened up that girth hitch and shoved my stake through both sides of it, just like that and slid it in. And that's going to 
take care of my center line of this tarp and hold it in place to the line so it's not flopping free. Now you can see in the middle, we have the same grommet hole here in the back of the poncho. So if we want to put a loop in that and stake it down, now we have a very, very secure shelter that's not going to go anywhere, even in high wind. And we've got a structure to it, which is great on the inside. All right, so as you can see, plenty of room in here. My head is still inside the shelter. My feet are still inside the shelter. Now, granted, I'm only five foot eight. Somebody 6'2 or 6'3 might hang out a little bit, but you can always lay diagonally in here and get more length out of it if you need to. To me, this is the perfect ultra light survival shelter. And to me, I mean, shelter, shelter. If I have the right ground pad and I have the right sleep system with me, this thing is a nice shelter to have with me that weighs almost nothing. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to put a Mylar space blanket in here behind these poles to make that parabolic reflector structure, which is more of a survival wintertime shelter. We can put a fire right out here in front. I mean, we've got tons of room to put a fire. Well, we only have to go to right here. And those, any flames that are this high aren't gonna affect anything up here because that half step really is from where we're sleeping out to here. And we can come close and sneak that up a little bit further if we wanted to because of the way the shelter kind of goes inward a little bit at the peak here, because of that parabolic shape, you've got a curve right here as well. So you can get your fire right in here. You don't have to make that thing very big because if you've got a reflective blanket in here, it's gonna be hot for sure. All right, so we've turned this shelter basically upside down now. And I'm just going to open up this origami space blanket, it's what I call these things, because you're never gonna get the thing back in the bag once you take it out. They're pretty much a one-time use blanket as far as that goes. Sometimes they're even hard to get out of the bag. They're so folded in there. We'll get him out. There we go. Now we just have a large sheet of highly reflective mylar here that we can unfold. So all I'm going to do with this now is just unfold it as best I can. And I'm going to kind of shove it in between these poles just like this. And stretch it out. All right, so now we're inside this bad boy. We've got that space blanket stretched out in here. Now there's some areas that there's some slack in this space blanket because you're not pulling it tight on the corners. You're just putting it underneath of these poles. Duct tape would fix all of that. And then you would have a nice tight surface in here if that's what you were after. But I can tell you, you've got that parabolic shape right here with a fire out front. There's no doubt you're gonna feel tons and tons of heat from this thing. And again, you know, it took five minutes to do this. If I took seven minutes, put a little bit of duct tape on this in a couple places just to shore it up, would be absolutely perfect. So for me, for a winter survival shelter, drop dead, down and dirty, the footage that you saw the other day with a reusable space blanket underneath this, 110 degrees with a four inch fire, that speaks for itself, no question about it. Okay guys, so to end up this video real quick, I'd like to thank Ed Mitchell again, the inventor of these poncho poles for allowing us to reproduce them and put our name on them. These Pathfinder poncho poles will release on Friday as a kit initially. We'll sell them separately down the road. The first initial drop will be as a kit that will include the poncho poles, a black canvas bag, the Helicon poncho, and one of those non-reusable space blankets as a emergency shelter style kit for $79.99. If you're getting the Helicon poncho, you're getting the poncho poles and a black canvas bag, and you're getting the non-reusable space blanket to go with us for a drop dead emergency winter shelter. And that will happen Friday at one o'clock. Guys, I appreciate you joining for this video. I appreciate everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. And I just want you guys to realize how much we truly appreciate you. Thank you.